Hi, I am Obli Chandran. I run a Mango Astronomy Club. So uh, I am an astronomy enthusiast and educator. So I am excited. There is an eclipse that is coming on 21st June 2020. So this video is all about that. Solar Eclipse. Solar means sun. Eclipse means to hide or block from view. So solar eclipse is essentially sun being blocked out. And who's going to block out? It's our moon. When can it block out from our view? When the moon moves in front of the sun. So that is exactly what we call as a solar eclipse. And within the solar eclipse, there are two types of eclipses. One is a partial solar eclipse and then you have a total solar eclipse. So total solar eclipse is when the entire sun is blocked out by the moon. When the moon is a little closer to Earth, so from our point of view, the entire sun can get blocked. So that is a total solar eclipse. And partial is when all three are not quite lined up. The moon might be a little below or a little above, so that it's not able to block the entire sun. So you get a part of the sun being hidden by the moon, or rather eclipsed by the moon. Such an eclipse is called a partial solar eclipse. So within the partial solar eclipse, there's a special case called the annular solar eclipse. In this case, all three, the sun, the moon and the earth are all perfectly lined up. But the moon is a little farther away from the earth than like its usual distance. So when the moon is a little farther away when it moves in front of the sun, it is quite unable to block the entire sun. So leaving a very thin ring around, that you call it as an annular solar eclipse, also famously called as the ring of fire eclipse. Annulus means the ring. The next solar eclipse is on 21st June 2020, which falls on a Sunday. It's a special type of partial solar eclipse like I mentioned earlier. It is called as the annular solar eclipse, also known as the ring of fire eclipse. There are two reasons uh, why this annular solar eclipse is unique. One in the context of our country, the second in the context of on a global scale. In the context of our country, this eclipse is the last annular solar eclipse that happens in this decade. The next eclipse that we have is on 21st May 2031. So in that sense, it is definitely special to our country, something that should not be missed. On a second context, on a global scale, remember I told you about how this annular solar eclipses occur? Depending on how far away the moon is or how close uh, to the earth the moon is, the ring's thickness can vary. For example, on December 26th, which is five months ago, we had another eclipse, uh, the similar uh, ring of fire eclipse, where we had the moon moving in front of the sun, leaving a ring around it. The thickness of the ring was 7%. That is to say, 93% of the sun was blocked by the moon. But this time, the sun is going to be blocked 99%, which means the ring that you're going to see during this time is going to be only 1%. You can imagine how thin that ring is going to be. Had the moon been a little closer to earth, it would have completely blocked out the sun, leaving us with a total solar eclipse. So that is unique about this annular solar eclipse. So how is it going to be special when you view it in the sky? The sky is going to become significantly dark. In fact, it's going to be dark enough that the planet Venus might become visible during the annular phase of the eclipse, which normally happens only during a total eclipse. This annular solar eclipse uh, is visible from our country everywhere. Also, it is visible from some other countries uh, in Africa and to the Middle East and uh, it goes through uh, India, Tibet, China. But within our country, the ring of fire phase, which is the, the ring-like appearance that I mentioned earlier, that view was, is reserved for uh, people living along a narrow stretch uh, that goes cuts across states like Rajasthan, uh, uh, Haryana and Uttarakhand. Uh, I can give you examples of some cities uh, like for example Suratgarh, Sirsa and you have Kurukshetra and Dehradun. So these are some of the cities that are lying exactly along the path where the ring uh, of fire uh, view would be there. For these people in the stretch 99% of the sun would be blocked. On either side of this band that you're seeing on the screen I'm showing you a map. So on either side of this narrow pink band the percentage of sun being blocked would vary depending on where you are on either side of it. So as you go further north or further south of this band, less and less amount of sun would be blocked. For example, if you are in Delhi, probably 85% of the sun would be blocked. If you come further down, 
let's say Nagpur or Mumbai, even less amount of sun would be blocked. For example, from Bangalore, only 36% of the sun is being blocked. And from where I live, in Coimbatore, it's only 30%. So that is exactly how each one from our uh, country would get a viewing of the eclipse. However, do not worry, we'll be live broadcasting the eclipse from different parts of the country so that you can enjoy the view of all the places. So the eclipse times are, uh, it starts uh, by around 10, 10 in the morning. I'm talking about highest Indian standard time. Ends by around 1.23. So it roughly lasts for about three hours with the max maximum eclipse occurring at 11.43 a.m. IST. First, to the domes, never look at the solar eclipse with your naked eye or a binocular or a telescope. It can harm your eye permanently, so it is advisable that you look at the solar eclipse only with the help of a certified or an approved solar filter or a solar glass, which you can uh, uh, get information from your local planetarium or people who make solar glasses in your city. You can always reach out to us if you would like to know where to get connected. Number two, never use x-ray sheets or sunglasses or polaroids to look at the eclipse. They are not safe. So to observe an eclipse, the filter that you're using should let less than a percent of the light from the sun. Much less than a percent. All these things that I mentioned like x-ray sheet or a polaroid lets more than 10% of the light inside. So it's completely harmful. So avoid them. And if you're planning to, number three, if you're planning to photograph the eclipse, do not point your camera, or it, be it a mobile camera or a DSLR camera directly at the sun because it's going to be like the maximum eclipse space is going to be at 11.43 and the heat and the light can damage the optics of your camera. So always use a solar filter, uh, particularly this is called a black polymer solar filter in front of the lenses before you take a picture or record a video. And as far as the do's are concerned, there's only one thing that I would like to tell. There are a lot of superstitions and myths around the eclipses that they are not good, they have, they are like uh, dangerous, uh, that you should not eat food during the eclipse or you should not venture out during the eclipse. There are a lot of people believe in being locked up inside the houses, even the windows are closed during the eclipse. There's only one thing I would like to tell you. The solar eclipse is nothing but the shadow of the moon falling on to the earth. And you can be as you are like a, on an any other day. You can follow your routine as usual, uh, enjoy the eclipse, eat during the eclipse, you know, venture out, do whatever you want. The only precaution is to safely wash it with a solar filter. Everything else is a do. Uh, so I hope you found uh, this video informative and useful. So we will be live broadcasting uh, the entire event from uh, at least a couple of places uh, from our country. Uh, on, on different uh, phases of the eclipse. So please subscribe to our Mango Facebook page and YouTube channel uh, in which we'll be live broadcasting the entire eclipse event. Thank you and we, I really sincerely hope the weather cooperates on that day for us to enjoy the eclipse from wherever we are.